Hey everyone, it's Suzanne, and I want to thank you for joining us for our So Susie podcast, where we'll be exploring and demystifying some of the crafting world's greatest mysteries. You will also be able to get the show notes and the links we reference by visiting us at www.sosusiepodcast.com. Today's podcast is sponsored by My Sweet Petunia and the Misty, which has more magical mojo than I do right now. It's probably a good thing I have so many. Maybe if I put them around my computer, I'll be able to siphon some of their her creativity because mine is MIA. I had a great topic for this week's podcast, but as I was writing it, I totally lost my mojo. The topic was fun and it started out all right, but somewhere around page three, it went from okay to pretty blah. And by the time I hit page five, I realized I was totally entering nonsensical BS mode and I had to stop. I just couldn't find my focus or my writing rhythm. Could I force the subject and stay on task? Of course I could. And I'm sure I would have been able to totally fake it. But the reality is we all hit those creative roadblocks. Our mojo goes on vacation without telling us and we are left with an empty vessel of epic boringness. Since I slammed headfirst into the blahs, I figured today would be a great time to move our podcast calendar around and bring forth the episode on losing your mojo, because I definitely misplaced mine. But what I want to know is why. Why do we hit these creative walls that stop us dead in our tracks? How can we overcome them? What can we do to find it again? And when do we decide to follow our mojo? and go on a mini hiatus. For me, as I am sure it is with a lot of you, I have been so busy with my company, selling So Susie stamps, growing our podcast, figuring out my new direction, and trying to find time to play with all my new craft goodies that I totally forgot to take time for me. Just like we heard from Elise Keegan on Monday's podcast, when we feel overwhelmed in life, Typically, we take it out on ourselves and our opportunities to be creative. And it's so true. And when we live, breathe, and thrive in a creative industry, our creativity merges with our work. So where do we go to relax, to take time for ourselves, to be creative? Honestly, I think we need to step outside of our creative comfort zone. If your main creative outlet is making cards, put them aside and check out one of Kelly Create's brush lettering practice sheets or take one of Kit and Clowder's coloring classes. Do something that will challenge you, that will get your creative juices excited again. By stepping outside of your comfort zone, you get away from the monotony of doing the same thing over and over again. Even if you're making something different every time, it's still repetitive and your brain settles into a groove of complacency. And if you're not careful, you will end up taking it for granted and losing the spark that you once had. By trying something new, your excitement level increases. You find other ways to be inspired, and let's face it, there's a good chance you can take that newfound interest and incorporate it into your hobby of choice. Breathing a new life into something that was becoming stagnant and dull. For example, we have a planner series coming up in June with a wonderful lineup of planner experts. And one of those guests is a bullet journal guru. I was so inspired after our interview that I went and ordered one to see how I would like it. Don't tell my hubby, but I am now the proud owner of 10 bullet journals and I am having a ball. I dream about layouts, different color schemes, and what stamps I'm going to use on this past week's empty spaces. It is downright ridiculous, but it's totally different than what I'm used to doing, but in line with the industry. Plus, some of my smaller stamps are finding a new purpose and getting more love. And my Tombow markers are now my newest best friends because they are fabulous to use in my Rhodia bullet journals. They don't bleed through and the colors are fantastic. I find myself excited to plan and to be honest, I am on a roll with guests lined up, interviewed and ready to go all the way through August. 
all because the excitement from playing with my new bullet journal was causing me to want to do it. Justine Hovey just finished her month-long 1 million views celebration. And do you know how she is handling her much-needed break? Normal life errands. She is simply taking some time to get the things that she has pushed aside finished. She's not thinking about editing, voiceovers, or cards. She is simply getting back to life. We may not like to pull our clothes out of the dryer because they are perfectly safe and you can always refluff, but stepping away from your craft table and doing a bit of housework may be an easy way to force your mojo to come back. If you're dreading opening the closet door for spring cleaning, consider cleaning your craft room instead. Tidy up your desk, swatch your inks, give your Misty a bath, catalog your stamps, go through your paper scraps and get rid of the little pieces you'll never use. Color code your crafting supplies. For those of you who cross stitch, sew, knit, or crochet, reorganize your floss. Wind the bobbins you've been putting off doing and go through your patterns. Reintroduce yourself to some of the projects you haven't gotten around to yet. Become excited all over again by what you find. Refold your fabric, organize what you have, plot out future projects. Start making your list of which grandkids are getting Christmas jammies this year, or which of your favorite podcast hosts is going to get a peacock colored fingerless gloves to keep her warm this winter. If you aren't feeling the desire to craft, plan for when you are. Organize, clean, plan. I hate to say it, but let's face it. Christmas will be here in no time. Start making your list of who is going to get Christmas cards. Are you planning on selling your cards at any craft fairs? What do you need to make and when should you start those projects? Maybe this is the year you decide to make your significant other a handmade quilt. Go through magazines and Pinterest to find the type of quilt blocks you want to use. Head on over to the fabric store and look for colors and prints that will go with your bedroom. Do the initial planning phase so when you're feeling more like yourself again, you know what it is you need to do. Or simply go outside. Take a walk. Enjoy the spring weather. Plant flowers. Read a book on the patio. Take pictures of your pets frolicking in the yard or the flowers starting to bloom. Get out of the house and go see a movie. Walk around the mall. Go for a short drive out of town. Do something a little out of the ordinary to help you jumpstart your creativity. Depending on the time you have to work with, plan your mini escape around your time constraints. Taking a few minutes and eating your lunch outside and not at your desk could be a quick and easy refueling station. If you feel compelled to force the issue, grab your Misty and make a slew of the same cards to send out to family and friends. They don't have to be anything fancy, just something simple to spark your creativity. Mindless work is a nice way to be doing without the stress of creating something new. Justine has an incredible video on making bulk thank you cards using the Misty that we'll post on our show notes. Sometimes casing fun cards helps to jumpstart your mojo and Justine creates easy to recreate cards. And I just love watching the Misty work. It makes me feel less lazy. And before I get all inspired to start working again, I think I'm gonna go refluff the dryer, grab my bullet journal, sit on the patio and do next week's layouts. But before I go and do a bit of backyard relaxing, remember, when you get into that nasty rut of life, remind yourself it's probably your brain telling you to take a break. Don't ignore it. Step back, do something different, recharge yourself, relax, organize, clean, plan, or binge watch 24. I hear that's a great way to spend a weekend. Just don't worry about losing it. Your mojo will come back, and when it does, you are going to be on fire and ready to conquer the world. So until next time, this is Suzanne, and you have been listening to the So Suzy Podcast. Happy stamping! Happy stamping!